we begin to look at Isaiah chapter 50. Isaiah chapter 50. Wealth of the 66 books in the Bible. Treasures in the Old Testament. It says, Thus saith the Lord, Where is the bill of your mother's divorcement? Who have I put away? God speaking. Of which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Now, what the nation of Israel is, they're blaming God. And God is turned to the nation of Israel. Okay, fine. If I have forsaken you, where's the bill of divorcement? And I would get a kind of implication, you know, a bill of divorcement is, I would assume that divorce is just running rampant. And then he said, okay, if I sold you out, give me proof of selling you out by the creditors. Show me the receipts. God's saying, okay, if there is a forsaking and if it's by me, God, you, the children of Israel, I want proof. A man that will end up or is in hell today. It's not God that puts him there. It is that man has chosen to reject whatever dispensation that man, that soul has been in, to reject what God has provided. If a man in the church age ends up in hell, it is because he, not God, has forsaken the love of God. That God has done all he has can, long-suffering. He has sent preachers. He has sent the Bible. He has sent the gospel. And that person is outright just rejecting. And ain't God. No man got, and, and hell could, or the lake of fire later in the future could say, oh, you know, God forsake me. It's because, you know, God, God didn't love me. That's why I'm, it could never be said. But God goes to say, behold, for your iniquities, Israel, have you sold yourselves? For your transgressions is your mother put away. It's you. It's your sins. And the fact is that we have Isaiah the prophet. We have Elijah and Elijah. And we have the, the, the book of the prophets and the people of the prophets that show that God loves Israel and he keeps sending people to them. But they're not listening to the prophets. Like today, they're not listening to the street preacher. They're not listening to the witness. They're not listening to the preacher. They're not listening to the Bible. It's not God's fault. Wherefore, when I came, when God came, don't say God's kept away. God came. Was there no man? And when I called, God called out. Was there none to answer? I came and I called. Well, give me one example of God coming and God calling. Isaiah. If God did not care about Israel, what's Isaiah? Why do we got a book called Isaiah? If God did not care and called out and reached out to people called Israel, what about Moses? Why not the, the Lord Jesus Christ? We're going to see a first advent passage coming in a moment. God don't care about, you know, the devil will have you think God doesn't care. What about Jesus? For God so loved the world. Now, there's a fact is that there are people sick and tired of preaching. There are people sick and tired of being had their doors knocked on. There are people sick and tired of the street preacher. There's people sick and tired of the Bible. And those be the ones that say, oh, God, you don't care. Wait a minute. I took a class in writing in high school one year. And I was told, you write what you know about. So let me speak about what I know about for a minute. There will be people involved at, at the farmer's market and maybe a vendor well god you never cared about me i sent that guy every saturday morning 
You didn't want to hear him. You hated him. But that's not what you want. The children of Israel, Isaiah, that's not the man they want, Isaiah. They don't want a rough mouth, and I don't mean cussing. I mean, they don't want a rough mouth word of God, Jeremiah. Don't you tell us our Christmas trees are wrong. Don't you tell us that, you know, the, the queen of heaven ain't going to save us. And it comes down to God didn't divorce them. God didn't forsake them. God didn't sell them over the creditors. Is the people don't want to hear what God has to hear or say. They want to hear what they want to hear. That's why this worldly and mega churches and, and, and this late the same church age is perfect for the worldly sinner because they give them what they want. No true Bible believing Christian that preaches the word of God when he's not going to have an airplane, he's not going to have a yacht, he's not going to have a mansion on this planet. Why? Because people don't pray and pay and listen to those preachers. Now, the ones that give them what they want and tickle the ears and all that. He says, is my hand shortened at all that it cannot redeem? In the previous chapter, and we talked about Redeemer, capital R, would be the Lord Jesus Christ. God says, hey, listen, I'll redeem you. You want to be redeemed? Come and get my pardon. But a pardon by law means you got to be guilty. You know, it's funny. It's so funny with Joshua. We got this. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And, you know, that's, that's a lot of worldly Christian houses. You know, you know what also that, that chapter says that's not on the, on the placard or anything like that? Joshua says to the fact that you got to put away the, the filthy gods. You got to get away with all the imagery and idolatry. And Israel said, Yeah, we'll do right. And they never mention idolatry and imagery and the false worship. And then we go into the book of Judges. Oh, boy. Oh, we're a Christian church, but we don't want to give up. <laughs> A lot of people at the judgment seat of Christ are going to be very quite shocked in the lads to see in church age. It is wood, hay, and stubble. Thinking it is gold, silver, and precious stones, and it's not. It ain't God's fault. I've had I've had preachers come up to me, oh, Jeremiah chapter 10, that's not the Christmas tree. Okay. That's what you want to believe. I try to teach the truth. Have I no power to deliver it? Now, look at that. You mean the God that, and he's going to mention in a moment, you mean the God that created all he created in Genesis 1. Paul will say the things in unseen and seen. The God that did all that work. He has not the power to deliver. Who's he talking to? He's talking about a nation of Israel. Remember the book of Exodus? Remember the plagues upon Israel? You remember the, there were plagues upon uh, uh, Egypt? God had one point, flies on Egypt, no flies in Israel. There'll be darkness in Egypt and no darkness in Israel. You know, that was a miracle in itself. I can't picture how that would have been. There's total darkness in, in Egypt, but Israel had lights. I still can't comprehend that in my mind. All right? Let's get before the wilderness church. What about the, the power of the Red Sea? Never mind that Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah uh, that Joshua did the same power with the Jordan River. Now, when we're talking about, when we read our Bible, you read the Old Testament, when God says power, look at the power that he has, and we're going to be reminded of that again. Israel's saying, God, you ain't got the power. Because you're forsaking us. Yeah, because your sins. Behold, at my rebuke, I dried up the sea. There's the Red Sea. And God says, no power, watch the power. I made the rivers in the wilderness. That's that rock. That, right, that rock is Christ. We read about that. 
that gave him water through the looks like that rock gave him water for the full 40 years. Their fish stinketh. What's that? That's when God dried up the, the Nile River. Turned it to blood. And maybe even other cases. Because there was no water. And that's not the now the Nile River, no water. The implication is that that Nile River turned completely to blood then. And the, the, the Egypt and that went trying to dig all around to find water. And the implication of Exodus and Isaiah chapter 50 gives us there was no water. It was all blood. And we know about the fish dying. And we know that the, the, it stunk up the area. And dieth for thirst. That's the Egyptians. If that's the Nile River. The, and the exes were told they go, they're trying to they're trying to dig to find water. There were people dying of thirst. And probably some who just about had it and drank the blood. I mean, no one would drink the blood. I clothed the heavens. All right, here's power with blackness. I make a sackle off their covering. How vast is the blackness of outer space? There are worlds out there we don't even know about. The Lord God has given me, uh, Isaiah, the tongue of the learned. I can speak what God's given me, Isaiah saying. That I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. You don't say the wrong thing. And yet the Bible tells us Christians and preachers were to preach in season and out of season. And one of the biggest things I've heard, not often, but I've heard time, you know, keep it in the church house. That's that's for Sunday morning only. No, 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 no. Bible says in season, all right, in the church house, out of season, outside the church house, preach. Open your Bible, read your Bible, witness. And even Isaiah is saying that. Morning by morning, he wake he waketh my ear to hear as the learn. Isaiah says, listen, every morning I wake up, I learn new things. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I am not rebellious. Neither turn away back. I'm a backslidden. Now you thought that was Isaiah. Look at verse 6. I gave my back to the smiters. I don't know if they were whipping Isaiah. And my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. Verse 4, 5, and 6 is the Lord Jesus Christ. It can be Isaiah. Remember, Isaiah was speaking for the Lord Jesus Christ in chapter 49. But here Isaiah is speaking, and he's speaking about Jesus. The testimony and the words of Jesus through Isaiah, we saw that in chapter 49. So, you want a type of Jesus Christ, you got Isaiah. He is speaking for Jesus Christ. He is quoted to be the words of Jesus Christ or the testimony of Jesus Christ. You know, Psalms 129. I mean, were they doing that those things to Isaiah? I don't know. But they did it, Jesus. Prophecy. Psalms 129. Verse 3. The flowers plowed upon my back, and they made long their furrows. That's describing the whips across the back of Jesus Christ. It was like the ground being torn up by a plow.
So verse 6 is first advent. Verse 4 and 5 is the testimony of Jesus and the testimony of Isaiah. For the Lord God will help me, Jesus, and Isaiah. Therefore shall I not be confounded as put to a shame, silenced. You know, he stood before Pilate. There was a couple of times he didn't answer at all. And Pilate marveled that he didn't answer. Yeah, but look at all the times that Jesus did answer. And John tells us in his gospel, there are things that Jesus said and did that are not recorded. And there were times that Jesus was silent because they didn't want the answers. Was that like Isaiah? I assume so. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. Nine fifty one. And it came to pass when the time was come that he should receive up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. Now Jesus was not hard and stiff necked like the nation of Israel is. We've read that. No, this is the point. In all actuality, And I can say for sure the ministry, when Jesus began to minister, you say about 30 years old, but really from the birth of Jesus, or even in the womb, Jesus had one purpose. He came to seek that which law. He came to go to Calvary. And if Luke 9, 51 said, you know what? We're getting closer. We're getting closer. Now I'm going to Jerusalem. And there, there's a time he's he's walking and they were going to this city. No, they didn't want him. You know, James and John said, shall we call down fire? No, he had his mind set. Nothing's going to stop me to go to Jerusalem. He is near that justified me. Who will contend with me? No, that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Many people will contend with him. And if you don't believe me that the contention against Jesus Christ, you have never had a public ministry. Now, in my public ministry, I, I, I'm a street preacher. I've gone door to door. I pass out gospel tract. I will open a Bible with you one on one. I've gone to the prison ministry. I, I, I've got many aspects of going out and planting and water seed. And the contention of men. Listen, I had one time, I had a preacher in prison, of all places, for this preacher. And we were sitting down, we were, I don't know what the comment is, but he finally got, oh, I proved you wrong, ha <laughs> and he got off. And he was fighting me. And that guy befriended me for weeks and weeks and weeks, and finally did this one week, and, and he, you know, he befriended me, and he, he's going to put a hook in me. And he was going to slaughter me, and he was going to flay me, and he was going to have me on the coals. I sat in my seat and I said, well, okay, that's fine. I said, you may have won that battle, but you know what? I get to go home to my family. You, Why are you here? I said, you've been declared guilty before a court of law. I've had Christians contend with me. I've had pastors contend with me. I had churches contend with me. I've had family contend with me. I've had the laws contend with me. You know what? When, when Peter comes back, he's got the joy, joy, joy down deep in his heart. Listen, Cornelius, this Gentile, and his family, and his friends got saved. Oh, right. And I don't know, but, you know, he may be saying, you know, that, that Gentile food is good. 
we're under grace now. You realize what the next chapter says when, when Peter met with the disciples, they contended with him that he went to be. And he had to say, wait a minute, wait a minute, guys, hold on here. Let me tell you what happened. And then they. You're going to live for the Bible. You're going to do right. There's going to be contentions. They fought with Jesus all the time. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the priests, the people. Even his own disciples at times. Let us stand together. Unity. Who is my adversary? The devil. In the world. Let him come near to me. I hope that's not Isaiah saying that. Now, I believe Job 1 and 2, literal. I believe that happens today. I've heard some preachers say that. I believe that happens today. Can you, can you imagine a moment? I don't know what the years are because our calendar's met. But Jesus is on this earthly ministry that Satan, Lucifer, walks up to heaven, looks over at the right hand. Not here. And he goes about accusing the brethren. You imagine that moment in Acts chapter 1 when Jesus ascended to the right hand of the Father and Satan goes up there. And you imagine Jesus is looking at the devil. They're not brothers. And he goes up to God and says, you know, and I'll say Christian, they were called Christians after, you know that Christian of yours? And the Father turns to the Son, what about that Christian son? All under the blood. What blood? My blood, Father. Got to look at the devil. I don't know what sins you're talking about. They're gone. You better confess your sins. Because if you don't confess your sins, then the blood can't cover you. Behold, the Lord God will help me. Who is he that shall condemn me? <laughs> and that's Jesus, the whole nation of Israel. The only one that did not condemn Jesus was Pilate and Herod. <laughs> as far as Isaiah, the whole nation of Israel is against him. They'll be against Jeremiah. We'll read about Jeremiah going to prison for the word of God. And they all shall be, they shall wax old as a garment. Just get old and die. The moth shall eat them up. You're nothing. You're just like a piece of cloth. Who is among you that feareth the Lord? Now we got a paragraph mark here. Now we're away from Jesus and we're away from Isaiah chapter, uh, verse 10, excuse me, 50 verse 10. Now this is God speaking, Isaiah speaking. All right, who are you that fear the Lord? That obeyeth the voice of his servant. Are you even going to listen to your employee? Are you going to listen to your slave? Probably not. Yet we are servants of God. We are the creation of the creator. That worketh in darkness. John chapter 3 says that darkness is the lost. And hath no light. John chapter 3. You're lost if you're in darkness. So we're talking and looking at lost people. All right. Let him trust in the name of the Lord. There is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. Let him believe on Jesus Christ today. Isaiah's time, let him believe on Jehovah speaking to the Jews. Just because they're Jews don't make it they're trusted in Jehovah. Just because they go to church doesn't mean they're saved. And stay upon his God. That will be Jehovah speaking to the Israelites. Isaiah really has no call to go, go to the Gentiles. Behold, 
All ye that are in darkness, lost, ye kindle a fire, your own light. Your own light that you kindle is like hellfire, where there is no light. Or candles. Or bonfires. All these things are the subject of paganism and religion. You compass and circle yourselves about with the spark. You spark your own flame. You, you, you got your own paganism. And you think you're right with God. Warming myself by the fire. I'm burning candles. We got a bonfire. You need to check bonfires out. The churches do it. and But who wants to look at paganism? Who wants to look at church history? Who wants to look at paganism history? These are lost men in darkness, and they got their own little light. And in the sparks, you, can, you, you have kindled. This shall ye have of my hand. God's hand. That's the only thing you got. You got that little fire. That ain't going to do you no good because that fire is going to go out. He shall lie down in sorrow, death in sorrow. Lie down. Uh, you got that little flame. You got that little fire. You got that little religion, whatever it is. One day you're going to be in the grave. You're going to find out too late. It's too late. Too late to find out it's too late. 